So when we give someone an anesthetic drug or an anesthetic agent, there are many routes or many ways it could enter the body. One is through breathing it, so an inhalation agent, or you could do, give it intravenously, or doctors rather could give it intravenously, which is through IV. So when we inhale something, the one that we are most familiar with is the nitrous oxide. That looks like this. If something were to be injected, so intravenous, the types of medications that could be injected are opioids, barbiturates, and benzo, or benzodiazepines. Now, as we know, opioids are very addicting, right? So uh, the, before, in one of the slides, I talked about addiction, and that is a huge problem because um, people who are addicted to opioids, let's say they're trying so hard to wean off of opioids and now all of a sudden they need to go under for general anesthesia they may reject they may say no you're not going to put me under i'll i'll bear the pain because they don't want to get addicted again they wean themselves off and they don't want to get addicted and you may have seen that in some medical dramas where you see people that are addicted to opioid and they're trying to wean themselves off and now all of a sudden they they find themselves in the hospital having to go through general anesthesia and they'll rebel and they'll say no you're not going to give me an opioid you're not going to put me under because i don't want to get back or hooked back to these drugs this drug over here is also very addicting So these are just some examples of drugs that are used intravenously, which is um, which means that they're injected into your bloodstream. Nitrous oxide is an inhalation analgesic, which means that you breathe it. It's a colorless gas. It's always in a blue cylinder or blue tube. It is the least soluble in blood. So what that means is that it doesn't really enter your bloodstream as much as other drugs do. And that's actually a good thing. Because it doesn't enter the blood, it's actually rapid in onset. So you feel calm, you feel relaxed a lot more quicker. And you can also recover a lot more faster. So it doesn't take long for you to recover. It's not as um, strong. So you're not put under, you're still conscious. And here's the important thing that you need to know with nitrous oxide. There is something that could happen to you if you're under nitrous oxide, and that is called diffusion hypoxia. And what that means is, I'm just going to move this over a little bit so that we can see what's written over here. Okay. So what that means is that, let's say you have nitrous oxide, or you're given nitrous oxide, after a while, what can happen is when they finish with the treatment, they will slowly wean you off of nitrous oxide. And when they wean you off of nitrous oxide, immediately right after, they'll give you oxygen, 100% oxygen, and they will give it to you for five minutes. It's really, really important that you take that oxygen that they're giving you for five minutes, because if you don't, you will get diffusion hypoxia, which means that you will get headache and other side effects. So diffusion hypoxia is basically when you um, have an, a, huge, a, a fast outward flow of carbon dioxide. So basically it messes up your oxygen carbon dioxide input and you could get headaches. So really, really important that you are on oxygen for five minutes right after you finish treatment. The reason is because you don't want to get a headache or other side effects after. That headache or other side effect could happen as a result of diffusion hypoxia. So as we know, nitrous oxide or laughing gas, it's really cool because it's very fast, right? Within five minutes, you can feel calmer. It's easy to administer, there's no injection. You recover from it really fast, and children are actually very receptive to it. Now, there are some adverse reactions that could happen, or there are some side effects that could happen, which is nausea and vomiting. One thing that you need to know is that when, if you do have nitrous oxide in your office, make sure that it is installed correctly and it's not misused. There's something called fail-safe system. So if there's no oxygen, so the way the nitrous oxide looks is the blue is nitrous oxide and the green is oxygen. And you would have both in your op. 
the nitrous oxide over here, which is in blue, this is what helps you keep calm. Oxygen is also important to have because remember what I was, was talking about earlier where at the end of the treatment, they give you oxygen, right? They give you 100% oxygen to prevent any diffusion hypoxia, to prevent any headaches. The fail-safe system is that if there is no oxygen, so if there's no oxygen left, it the whole system should shut down, should shut off automatically because the oxygen is really important. You need to have oxygen for nitrous oxide to um, work effectively, basically. Okay, So make sure that we have a fail-safe system in our dental office when we're looking, when we're working with nitrous oxide. I'm going to um, post a different thing which talks about dental hygienists and nitrous oxide. So the rules in Ontario of um, whether dental hygienists can administer nitrous oxide or whether we can work on a client that it has nitrous oxide. So we'll look more into that later on. Contraindications. So who do we not give nitrous oxide to or who is not allowed to take nitrous oxide? Anyone who has breathing issues. Okay, so COPD when their lungs are weak. Uh, someone who's got a really stuffed nose, we don't give nitrous oxide to. Pregnant, if you're pregnant, we don't give nitrous oxide to you because it's a high risk of miscarriages and not only to the client but also to you if you're a female or to the wives of male operators. Lastly, this is the last slide here. Balanced general anesthesia is really important. What that means is you want to have, um, you want to go under while feeling less anxious. Your muscles, you want to relax your muscles. You don't want to be aware of what's going on if you're put under and you want to have no pain. So you want to have all these symptoms and to get all these uh, reactions, you have you need a balanced anesthesia, which means that they give you a mixture of drugs. So not just one drug, but a mixture of drugs or balanced anesthesia, which is just the right amount of drugs to achieve all these responses. And so when you get balanced anesthesia, when you get all these response, when they give you the right dosage of these drugs, from stage one, from consciousness, you can immediately go to stage three, to unconsciousness, and you skip the stage two part. And remember, stage two is when you can become combative, right? So, and that's ideally what people want to do. We want to skip stage two because that's not a good stage, right? This is also where you could start vomiting. This is also where you could lose control of your bladder. So, balance anesthesia is when they give you the right amount of anesthesia or the right amount of a mixture of drugs to achieve the, all these uh, symptoms. All right, thank you for listening.